As I'm talking to you now, there are people that believe I'm fake. Who dares to say that Apostle Michael Oropo is fake? And the man of God said, I'm fake. Ha! Everybody that is close to that man of God, if he as much as mentions my name is finished. I know that you don't mention names, which is something I like about him. You can attack what is wrong, but you don't have the, the clearance to attack somebody. And that is what we are discussing in today's video as we look at the person of Apostle Michael Oropo and his former spiritual father. If it is me you are attacking, forget about it, I won't, I won't say anything. But if you, if, you, if you are doing something that will bring injury to the body of Christ, me I can see. That thing you are doing, do it without putting it online because you are going to damage the body. I will rise up. I have a calling along that line to respond to you. These are two wonderful people I respect and love. If you think I hate anyone I discuss about here, you are wasting your time. So recently there has been this conversation about Apostle Michael Oropo's standards when it comes to dealing with issues he observes in the body of Christ. And when we talk about the body of Christ, you are usurping the place of Jesus. Only Jesus is the pastor of the church in Nigeria. Every pastor, no matter the number of your members, you are still a, a pastor over one congregation, not over the body of Christ. Jesus is the pastor of the body of Christ. We know in part, but in part, are you following what I'm saying? And you can only reach as much as God opened the door for you. Is that okay? So, I won't ever say that kind of a statement. If God sent a word to the body of Christ, it will travel. Don't, you don't need to push it. Which I understand. But you see, by virtue of social media we have today, when you are speaking from your altar and you are projecting that on social media, because we now have Christians who are products of many anointings or products of many teachers. Relevance by association. Sometimes how you get to pick the preachers you listen to is because maybe this one is a friend to this preacher I love or this one is someone that actually reverses this one or based on the relationship that you see established. You see that there are also clans, tribes and whatsapp groups if i'm to put it that way some of you have seen that over time as we discuss about things that happen in church you are watching me right now know that apostle michael Oropo himself was to a great extent trained by his service and work with the person of apostle aramosai but please there's one fact you have to know about Apostle Michael Ropo. Before he served, or would I say worked with the person of Apostle Aramosai in the Remnant Network, he has served in other ministries. Let me remind you where he stated his mission statement and vision statement. Uh -huh. What I'm saying, I'm saying facts according to what he said. Do we understand? Did I say anything wrong? Very good. As everyone grows, come on. Look at you that have been watching me since. Should be the first time we used to do analysis. Remember, I always used to, I always used to dance at the end of the video. <laughs> Now I'm not dancing anymore. Is it maturity or not? No, it's not about maturity. I don't want my videos to be too long, so I try to make them shorter as well. So we leave entertainment aside. But now I guess you understand what I'm talking about. So if you understand the premise of where we are going to now, you see that to a great extent, his relevance, we are going to look at relevance by association very, very well. His state of relevance really really did, did came with his connection with the remnant network of course it is god that makes a man hallelujah so it's a law in the spirit see some people think why we honor men is because of relevance by association church is not politics relevance by association may happen in the world not in the kingdom when we talk about kingdoms, we are talking about thrones and legislations. When we talk about kingdoms, we are talking about purposes that are born in the heart of a spirit. When we talk about kingdom, we are talking about emphasis that predates the very creation of the foundation of the world. Every man that begins to discern kingdom, he will know that what is pushing and driving him existed before he was born. So he comes to this world not to be creative. He comes to this world to discover what he must do in order to establish the counsel of God that was fabricated by the community of the Godhead before time itself began. And until a man is able to walk through those paths, no matter who he is in time, he will not be relevant. Kingdom is a game of thrones and spirits are the masters in this game. And if you don't understand that even the civilization of humankind is born from the politics that takes place in the heights of the heavens, you will be frustrated and you will try to make headway in life until the day when the veils of the divide are open and you cross from time into eternity. That is when you will realize that you live but you are not wise. Kingdom business is a politics in heaven. 
It's a game of thrones. Please, before Apostle Michael Ropos, people start arguing in the comments. I saw the recent video. It was as if it was just shots fired at BRG. G -g 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 -g. But it's okay. Come on. Right here, it's an open discussion. So we can always discuss about a couple of things that we think is important. But this particular video that was trending for a while is something that I found interesting. Apostle Michael Ropo said this. I don't attack people. You know, there's a move, of, or a move in the body of Christ now where everybody wants to attack somebody and they think it is boldness to call somebody's name and to attack him. And when you talk, they quote scriptures. Quote scriptures. The Jewish says, Prophet Java, passion is a criminal. It's not a fake. It's a criminal. See, I will do a teaching on that someday, but not now. But you see, most of these things are wrong. You can attack what is wrong, but you don't have the, the clearance to attack somebody. Because that person might even be wrong when you are talking. What if the person re repents? So you have shut the door of the body of Christ to that person. Whereas all of us at some point were involved in something that was not of God. Some of us were liars. Some of us were manipulators, some of us were fornicators, some of us, we had many things. God picked all of us from different gutters. And so, uh, attack what is wrong. Let your people know the difference between good and evil. And let them choose good. But leave the people. When you talk, they start quoting scripture. Go and read the New Testament. Every time the apostles attack people, the people came to their congregation. Go and check. In Acts 16, when Paul attacked the young lady that was a diviner, she came to Paul's meeting. She was following Paul up and down. These are the men of God. Listen to them. That was when Paul attacked him. When Jesus told Peter, get thee behind me, he was in his congregation. You can't rise up and go and start attacking somebody in another church. Or God, you are not Jesus Christ. Most of these things are caused from pride. And God may have called some people to do it, but they, they, in order not to tear the body of Christ, let's attack what is wrong and leave people alone. Because what we do now is that if somebody is your enemy, you want to force every other person that is close to you to make them their, your enemy. If God even tells you that this person is fake, he has not told me, sir. Thank God for your spirituality, but I will not tag somebody fake because God told you. Now, for the purpose of order, if you are under an authority, and that authority picks from God that this person is fake, if you are under that authority, you must align. Because if you don't align, it means you are walking in disorder. And even though you align, it doesn't give you the clearance to attack the person. The Bible said, if a man is standing or falling, he said, leave him. Let his master judge him. Jesus is the judge. And then if somebody is not in your congregation, leave him. Let him hear God at his own pace. Because what the body of Christ is doing now is they've divided the body into different camps. As I'm talking to you now, there are people that believe I'm fake. Now, that is quite much of a truth to say based on what he believes but the way he got to explain it is the reason why i had to bring my bible today i don't try to be apologetic when it comes to commentaries i make i like to make sense and deal with issues but probably today we have to look at the bible and this is not me trying to teach you apostle scriptures but it is facts, so you can always cross check the facts that you have as well in your hands if you are a christian watching me he talked about the subject of dealing with people, dealing with issues and not dealing with people when it comes to calling out falsehood in the body of Christ. That is a fact. In fact, even Jesus himself said we should beware. Beware of false prophets. There are many examples in scripture where there has been a call out or what I say that directs you to beware of certain things that are happening in the Christian community. So, understanding the person of Michael Ropo, he said that when it comes to his own aspect of calling out issues in the body of Christ, which of course are issues, we have seen many of them, especially on this platform. Come on, do you want me to name names from those who are the upper echelon, big names, to the ones you have not even met before in your life? We have looked at many of them here. Okay? So, if you are in doubt, know where you are. This platform is not where we come and say, real or fake we don't even go into those definitions god knows the ones that are real or fake <laughs> but by their fruits you shall know them right so i show you the fruits then you get to know what you want to know but based on what he gets to say right here he talks about the subject of what if they repent and that is where we have an issue here in the christian community where once 
a dealing or wants a misdeed or a, an error, whether it's heretical, you don't even see me go into the whole theological blah blah blah. I look at the drama or what is happening, or this pastor calling out this pastor, I bring it together and make sense out of it. When these things are being called out, look at Ebo Davina recently, many pastors are giving him wutu wutu all around left, right, center. Yes, it's happening. He is also giving bad boost to many pastors. Ebo Damina and Moses Alu. Two of them are like, <laughs> I don't know, as if they were just meant for each other. Mudesalo will carry Ebedamina's message, play on his, in his church, and be analyzing for the church members. Ebedamina as well will be giving it to everybody, left, right, center, because of course, he seemed to be the one that is seeking attention, and sometimes he says some things that are very, very <laughs> difficult to comprehend. But later we'll look at some of these things. So, if you understand this, you have to know that for a fact that someone's error is being called out does not mean that you are defining the person as being real or fake. So, for those of you that are in Michael Oropo's camp, when you are calling out an issue or you are speaking about an issue you observe in the body of Christ, your members may not understand, but there are people that actually get perspective of what you are talking about and put you in perspective. I don't know if you understand. So with, when you're calling out issues, there has to be an example. There has to be a reference point. So you may not be the one, to, you may not be saying this person, this person, this person. But you can say, oh, recently something has been going on on social media and all, like this particular comment. I don't attack people. You know, there's a move, of, or a move in the body of Christ now where everybody wants to attack somebody and they think it is boldness to call somebody's name and to attack him. And when you talk, they you quote see, scriptures. What he's saying right now, he has not called anybody names. But if you are someone that is active in the Christian community, you see what is happening and you are seeing many people that call out people by name and say this one is fake or this one did this or this one did that. An example is one of Apostle Aramosai's son, Joel Ogebe, and as many others as well. So what point am I trying to make right now? You can be a friend to everyone and try not to hurt anyone you know, here and there. Joshua Solomon is just a typical kind of person, more of like brotherly love, everything. But they see and know what is happening. They talk about those things, but don't want to mention names, leaving the members themselves to maybe some way, somehow, if they get to see such a thing happening, they'll be like, oh, this is what daddy was talking about last time. Okay, now I'm being weird. That is a good thing. If you don't get to call names, that's wonderful. Some people call names. And even when some people don't call names, there are people like me that put it into perspective so that people understand. That is why I analyze. For example, when Aroma Osai was talking about the whole I am, I am more gifted than God um, idea of uh, Makandiwa. You will need to sit back and hear what our major ministers teach. In recent times, there's a campaign on internet about the statements that a, a leading preacher on the continent of Africa is making now, from which t-shirts have been developed. It's, it's like a movement. Guess what the statement is? I am more gifted than God. That's a development that is utopian. It's a development that lacks reference. That is an extra biblical comment. But Apostle Ramosai made a comment about it because it was viral, it was everywhere. But understanding this now, this is how Apostle Ramosai gets to explain his own aspect, which he said is tied to his calling for what he does. I am a watchman in the area of doctrine. I'm concerned about what is preached in the name of Jesus. I'm concerned about it because I have a calling along that line. The apostle would argue that because of our desire for souls, we must contend for the purity of the gospel. It is our desire for souls that compels us to contend for the purity of the gospel. Not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it and it alone is the power of God unto salvation to all those who believe. But if what we believe is a tainted gospel and a perverted gospel, then we are calling into question the very concept of salvation itself. 
There is no either or dichotomy here. We must be passionate about souls and we must be passionate about contending for truth. We must be passionate about contending for truth because we're passionate about souls. So you see right now, one will be watching Apostle Michael Oropo, understanding the background of where he comes from and all that, will see that he will think that he is antagonizing the person of Aaron Mosai, which may not be so because there are many other people that do the exact same thing. You understand? Like when Abodabina called out the person of Hubert Angel during the whole gold ma mafia um, situation. He called him Mutoto Thief. <laughs> we played the video right here. So there are many examples that you can put in the box. I don't know if you understand. So people that are seeing it to be more of like Apostle Michael Ropo going, being anti Aramosai, it may not actually be so, but based on what they get to say, it is just, you can see a clear separation, different pathways as to how they understand and practice in the Christian faith. But you have to understand the times of the Bible is different from the times we are right now. You see, the times of the Bible, there was no social media. How information gets to fly as to what happens here, happens here, is different from how it is right now. You can sit at the comfort of your home and be consuming a lot of different things on social media, both from the ones that are fake, the ones that, are, uh, that have weaknesses, and the ones that are diabolic, based on how um, Aromo is, uh, based on how Oropo got to explain categories of preachers. Listen, there are three categories of wrong people. There are those who are diabolic. Those ones have power, but they are using demonic powers. There are those who are not diabolic, but they have sins. They have weaknesses that is a danger to the body, like fornication. So, for example, if you meet somebody who is in authority and giving to fornication and is not repenting, you have to tell people to avoid that person respectfully. Not castigating the person necessarily, but let them avoid him. That's what the Bible teaches advise those uh, of those under you to avoid those who fornicate and you can counsel them and tell them who and who to avoid but don't, you don't shoot up something to blow the body of christ open and then there are those who are not they don't have weaknesses but they're actually fake they don't have any power they are just manipulating people those ones are criminals they're higher links so while this is happening it's important that because preachers know that in the Christian community, for the sake of love and unity, their people or their congregation listen to any and everyone on social media or many people. So when they know this and then some particular ideas is gaining relevance, that is where you understand the angle of where Aramo Osai comes in, where something is trending, something is becoming mainstream, and then if he has an issue with that based on scripture, he calls out the issue. Of course, when you listen to him talking about that particular issue, you will know for sure, except brain is not inside your head, that he's talking about this person or this person, even though Aramo Osai will not call out a name categorically. The last time he did call out a name directly was when he was talking about TB Joshua. That one was okay. Yeah, you understand. So those that are in that TB Joshua clan, they have a problem with the remote side from yesterday till today. <laughs> you understand. So now you get to see both parts, how they get to function. But I want to look at a couple of things that Apostle um, um, Oropo brought as a defense. I'm still waiting probably to see that teaching he is working on with respect to what he wants to teach about the subject of calling out falsehood in the body of Christ or would I say, you know, when you see something that is getting mainstream that should not be so. But because of this same mindset of unity, when you see heresy itself prevailing, someone has to be to speak out against it because if no one speaks out about it you might be there your congregation are consuming things and learning becoming impacted by something else that they are learning from somewhere and thinking that that is what it should be scripturally there are many of those things so when your pastor decides to speak as well publicly because of social media it goes everywhere and you can say oh this person is speaking about this person clearly even though they don't get to mention names so the whole tussle, oh, Romo Sai is talking against uh, uh, Michael Ropo, maybe not, because there are many people in that particular context.